Good morning, this is Drew Damp, and I welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to the broadcast of the Sunday morning worship service from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in California, Missouri. We are happy to have you worship with us on this Sunday, January 7th, 2024, as we recognize the baptism of our Lord. Today we are excited to have a youth duet, Kate Freiner and Kara Freiner, offering an anthem at the end of the service. The con congregation prepares itself for worship as the organist, Twyla Duval, plays the prelude to the opening hymn. The procession with the cross carried by Mason Lake has entered the nave of the church. The acolyte for this service is Will Lake and Pastor Copper has entered the nave of the church with the procession. The broadcast of this worship service is underwritten with church funds. The flowers that grace our altar are provided by Wayne and Karen Hagemeyer in celebration of the birthday of Dwight Christian on January 22nd. Also in blessed memory of Connie Tuttle celebrating her birthday in heaven on January 11th and Melissa Hagemeyer who passed to her heavenly home on January 25th, 2022. The opening hymn for this worship service is As With Gladness, Men of Old located on page 397 in the Lutheran Service Book. Following the opening hymn, Pastor Copper will lead the congregation in today's worship service. Our worship bulletins can be found on the church website at stpaulslutheran1860.com under the bulletin board menu. Pastor Copper will begin today's service with the invocation, followed by the confession and the absolution. Then we will begin our service with Divine Service Setting 3 with responsive reading of, the, of Psalm 29, verses 1 through 4 and 10 and 11. Then the congregation will join in singing Gloria Pertrae, Lutheran Service Book, page 186, the Kyrie, page 186, the Gloria in Excelsis, page 187, and the Salutation on page 189. Afterwards, Pastor Koppel will lead the congregation in the prayer of the day.
Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, all of you who are with us this morning, especially those who are following, following us on Facebook. Welcome those who are visiting with us. Today we have a lot to celebrate. It is the King's Sunday, or the Three Kings Sunday, we call. We also celebrate Epiphany this week. And today's uh, worship service theme is the baptism of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A lot is going on in our church as the year begins. So let us uh, worship our Lord and Savior Jesus with the words we have in our bulletin. If you can, please stand so we can start. We start today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. The congregation, the death, Christ, the death, Christ died. He died of sin once for all, but the life he lives, the life he lives to God. So you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. As a call ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the first reading for this Sunday is from the Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and his strength. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful, the voice of the Lord is majestic, the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, the Lord breaks the cedars of the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord breaks the cedars of the Lord breaks the cedars of the cedars of the The Lord sits enthroned over the flood, the Lord is enthroned as king forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaim him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, the Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Today's servicing elder, David Ott, approaches the lectern to lead us in the Old Testament reading from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and the epistle reading from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. The congregation joins in singing the Alleluia in Lutheran Service Book, page 190, and then Pastor Copper will lead the congregation in the reading of the Holy Gospel from St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Good morning. Good to see everyone here worshiping with us this morning and those who are joining us on KRLL Radio uh, as we come like the wise men and bow down and give gifts to our King Jesus. Our Old Testament reading from Genesis 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that that light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. This is the word of the Lord. In our epistle reading from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning that grace may increase? By no means. There are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were bar therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has majesty over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive in God, in Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 to verse 11. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of those sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At the time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. 
Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came down from heaven. You are my son whom I love with you. I am well pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. And with all the Christians in the world, let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, I died and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he'll come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The congregation now sings hymn 404 in the Lutheran service book, Jesus Once with Sinners Numbered. Then the children will come forward for their message this morning presented by Deborah Lake. Children, come on up. How are we this morning? I'm 
you guys all back to the routine, back to school, daycare, all the things after all the holidays. Tired. Tired? Yeah, I agree. So today we're going to talk about um, something that uh, has to do with what Pastor talked about earlier, epiphany. So I have a question for you all. Have you ever been somewhere or gone somewhere you've never been before? Of course we have, right? If you go somewhere you've never been, how do you get there? A car. How do you know which way to make the car drive? The well, the steering wheel, that's true. So what about um, a map? Maybe does mom and dad, do they put a little, they use their phone, the map app, and put in there where you're going, and it says, make a left in 500 feet. Maybe? Yeah. What about before phones? <laughs> yeah, a map, a paper map. So when you're planning to go somewhere to another town, you might ask somebody for directions too, someone who's been there before. And they might give you some general directions, maybe suggest the best roads or avoid this road because they're putting in a new bridge. Who knows, right? So we use that to tell us where to go. Well, after Jesus was born, some, some wise men, three kings, saw a star in the sky, and they believed that announced the birth of King Jesus. They traveled to Jerusalem, and they began to ask, where is this newborn king of the Jews? We saw this star, it rose, and we've come to worship him. So Herod heard about the wise men and their search for a king, and he was deeply disturbed. So Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men and said, <clears throat> and they said to him, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. As you know, the wise men didn't have a map. So they didn't have a phone. How did they get to Bethlehem? What was there to guide them? The star. The star. The star was there to guide them? So the wise men followed that information that the priest had given to Herod and the star that God had given them to guide them, to lead them right to Jesus. When they found him, what did they do? Worship. Yeah, they worshipped him. They gave him gifts. And people everywhere... Men, women, boys, and girls, we're still searching for Jesus. And these are all people who want to help, people like missionaries, pastors, and Sunday school teachers. So besides the star, does anyone know where we can find a map, the map that God has given us to find Jesus today? Where do we find that? Do we have a, a map, a guide? Maybe, it's, maybe it might even be a book. That tells us Bible. the Bible. So the Bible is the map and the star that leads us to Jesus. All of us can read it every day to make sure we are headed in the right direction to find him and share his love with others. You guys say a prayer with me? All right. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus we, seek you today we seek you today because we want to worship you, we want to worship you. and crown you as our king. Thank you for the Bible, Thank you for the Bible. That, leads us and others to you. that leads us and others to you. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. Pastor Copper will now offer the congregation his sermon. May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of us on this beautiful Sunday as we celebrate so many things. Among them, we will celebrate this voice calling us, this voice of God that called and said and affirmed Jesus, Jesus as Lord and Savior as he was baptized or after his baptism. A child cries out in the darkness out of fear, perhaps a bad dream, perhaps because of monsters under the bed. 
and the voice of a parent down the hall immediately gives the little child the comfort they needed to stay put and survive the night in a dark bedroom all by themselves. Something is exciting about voices. Something is sweet and nice that is stick to our brains about some voices we hear. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how far you are by phone. If you hear the voice of someone you love, something exciting, something nice happens in your whole body. Your senses change. There's this sense of happiness and joy just to hear that beautiful voice. Now our brain can remember many of them, but let me tell you, but only the voices of the people we love can bring peace and comfort to us. The voice of a loved one, even over the phone, set us at ease and gives us peace. When we find ourselves in uncomfortable or troubling surroundings and circumstances. And let me tell you one thing about voices. I have been at the bedside of many of thy people. And the voice of a loved one, whether that voice is speaking of the one dying or it's the voice of the dying person is speaking to their grieving loved ones, that voice has an almost miraculous way of bringing calm and peace to a very difficult situation. But even though those voices are tender and sweet, they cannot be compared to the one heard at Jesus' baptism. That is more than meets the eye in this reading of the gospel today. The voice comes from heaven. The, whole, the voice, the, the heavens needs to be parted. And so the voice comes and say, this is my son. You are my son whom I love with. And I am well pleased with you. The words refer to Jesus. As Jesus inaugurates, he starts his mission into the world as to be a Lord and Savior. From the Jordan River to the cross. To the cross, to the grave, to the grave, to heavens. Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan River. This is the reading this is what the, re- the, reader, the reading, I'm sorry, it's talking about today. When the voice of God was heard. What a beautiful picture. But if that doesn't strike you as kind of strange, then you need to think a bit more about what John's baptism is all about. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. But what Jesus, the sinless, sinless Son of God, had done to repent, are not baptism for those who are sinners? Why is then Jesus is being baptized? We'll answer that question. I'll let you bother. I'll let that question bother you for a minute. John's baptism was for the forgiveness of sins. We know that. John was baptizing before he sees and meets Jesus at the river. But what what did the sinless Son of God need to be forgiven? For example, as he goes to the baptism. John was the lesser. Jesus was the greater. John's baptism was with water. Jesus' baptism was with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Yet, at the Jordan River, in the baptism of our Lord, the greater, the sinless, is baptized by the lesser. And the sinless one is treated as a sinner. And when you comprehend this, let me tell you, You have comprehended the gospel of your salvation. 
John's work was what I call PBPP. What is that? Preach, baptize, prepare, and point. This is what John, John was doing. He was baptizing, but he was only preparing for the great of the greatest event. Jesus' baptism. He is pointing. He is preparing the word. He is preparing the way to the Christ, to the Son of God. Different than the Old Testament, for example, where people would come and present their gifts and a lot of blood will be shed. Jesus, John, presents a different way of sacrifice. It is with water. It is to clean up a way to say, now your life has been, you, you, you will be different after this baptism because you're going to be purified. It is more like a purification. You clean up yourself with the water and then you go on in your life knowing that Something special happened to you. And for that reason, you try harder not to sin against God and His commandments. But the greater should baptize the lesser. The sinless one should baptize the sinner. Well, that, 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 that thing didn't happen at John's baptism. But Jesus says, let it be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. <clears throat> to fulfill all righteousness. There was God's plan. Jesus' baptism by John in the Jordan River was part of God's plan. When Jesus comes in, humble himself before the lesser, John the Baptist, and it is baptized, not because he has sinned or because he has sinned, but because he wants to make himself a sinner like us. This is the key to understand John's baptism and Jesus' participation in it. It was necessary to fulfill all righteousness. It was necessary that Jesus had to get down in the water of a sinner's baptism and be treated like a penitent. He became one with us, with all of humanity in our sin. He joined us in the filth of our rebellion. He took a bath in our bath water. He became a sin for us who knew no sin. He didn't simply bear our sins. He became our sin. <laughs> Jesus' baptism and his cross are just one thing. And this is important to notice in this reading. He even refers to his death as a baptism he must undergo. His work begins in the water. It ends on the cross. His work begins with the Spirit descending upon him, the voice of the Father testifying it, and he ends it with the Spirit departing. The voice, the sweet voice of the Father giving the guidelines. You see this man being baptized. This is my son to whom I love. And upon him are all your sins. And upon him is, is, are all the problems of the world. And he is going to carry from here, from this river, to the cross. Jesus' work begins where he stands in solidarity with sinners. Elbow to elbow in the same bath water as prostitutes, tax collectors, and all manner of religious 
rejects. His work ends on the cross where he hangs in solidarity with thieves, promising the faithful one paradise to all of them. His work begins with water, his work ends with water and blood flowing from his side. Remember what happened in the last hours of his life, his baptism. The heavens are open to him at his cross. Just the way the heavens are open to all of us sinners who also were baptized and received the Holy Spirit. The voice of the Father spoke from the open heavens. And here is the word we have to hear. The will of the Father was revealed in Jesus as God addressed him as his son, his beloved son. You are my beloved son, and I am well pleased. In the same way the Father testifies to you in your baptism, because today we are, we are celebrating the baptism of Jesus, so we have to be reminded, and I think there will be a, a nice thing to do if you can remember the date of your baptism and celebrate that. Because if God says, this is my beloved son in baptism, he calls you also as beloved, and he declares you also his child as he forgave all your sins and gives you a new life. And as the new life comes to you, heavens are parted. And this window comes to you and say, it is through here you will find a everlasting life. And I'm glad we read Romans chapter 6 today because Romans chapter 6 tells us a lot about what baptism means. The words of Paul to the Romans that a sinner justifies or stands justifies before God by faith and the promises of forgiveness through the blood of Christ. And that apart from any works, apart from faith, any works are good. That justification is what Paul says, a forensic act of God. When God declares us to be innocent. After our baptism, God declares us innocent because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Why was Jesus baptized if he had no sin? Why was Jesus baptized if he had no sin? Can you answer that? Jesus was baptized because he is inaugurating, because he's submitting himself to the same things we did. He wants to show the way to the Father doing the same things we submit ourselves. But, but the baptism is much more than that. The baptism brings us life and peace with God. In faith now, death, death has and cannot hurt us anymore because our sins have been washed by the waters of baptism. This is the way God sees us through our baptism. Now we are clean. We are purified. And even though we still have original sin over here that sometimes wants to tell us not to do the word of God, not to do the will of God, then we are reminded that we are baptized. That because we are baptized, sin will not win us. Martin, Luther's, Martin Luther used to say this sentence, 
when the devil comes and tempts you, don't tell him, don't tell him anything but, I am baptized. I am baptized. And he'll run away. We are all baptized and saved by the grace and love of God. And this is what we are celebrating today. That we are saved. And by that reason, we should fear not. Now words of Isaiah chapter 43. We should fear not. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1. Words of God for us today. May God bless us as we can cherish and guard and always rejoice as we are baptized in Christ and saved by his blood. In his name, amen. The ushers from Usher Seth Kincaid's team will now come forward to receive the offering plates while the congregation sings the offertory on page 192 in the Lutheran Service Book. We invite you to listen to the worldwide message of the Lutheran Hours, broadcast on station KRLL at 7.30 a.m. each Sunday morning. Today's Lutheran Hour was sponsored by Marjorie Keister, to the glory of God. Each weekday morning at 6.15 a.m., the California Ministerial Alliance conducts a five-minute devotional program on KRLL. We invite you to begin your day with these messages. This week's messages are offered by Rev. Nick Van Dam of pastor of United Methodist Church in California. We are happy to provide these broadcasts to you, but they are costly, and memorials have run out. In order to continue our radio broadcast, we need your financial help. If you value our broadcast and would care to help support them, we urge you to send your donation to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, 207 North Owen Street, California, Missouri, 65018. We would greatly appreciate your support in helping us continue these broadcasts. As the ushers come forward to present the offerings to Pastor Copper for, the, for its blessing, Pastor Copper now prepares to offer the prayers of the church followed by the Lord's Prayer. Following the Lord's Prayer, our youth duo will sing the anthem, Breath of Heaven.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you reveal your Son in the wondrous epiphany in the Jordan. So also you have revealed your name and blessing to us in holy baptism, declaring us your beloved heirs. Grant that we may daily die to sin and rise to newness of life, living with joy as your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, bless all places where your people teach and learn. Guide teachers and the students that together we would marvel at your creation and appreciate the depth of your wisdom. Grant that all those baptized into Christ would receive the boldness to lead faithful and pure lives in this world, ever mindful of our promised heavenly inheritance. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Lord, give comfort and relief to those who are sick, those who are depressed, tired, confused, or in any need. We especially pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are requested our prayers. We pray for Darlene Blyke, Fred Blyke, Mary Ann Clinton, Gary Crawford, Gina Foster, Larry Gish, Joe Green, Janice Howard, Chris Youngmeyer, Joyce Kisling, Lucas Manley, Judy Meisel, Wyatt Morris, Troy Morris, Brad O'Neill, David Opal, Michael Rex, Shirley Robinson, Larry Schornovark, Eileen Sheriff, Kerry Stauffer, Patty Swatzel, Sandy Taylor, John Turner, Bob Winkler, and Dolores Woods. Also comfort our members who are homebound and in care facilities and unable to be with us. We pray for Clarice, Alexander, June, Friedmeier, Karen, Hagmeier, Ruth Higgins, Jerry Kiesel, June Kister, Bill and Ruth Meyer, Norma Jean Martin, Lula Rohrbach, and Dorothy Stubinger. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Well, Heavenly Father, we also pray for the family and friends of Carl Kister and also Iris Hack, both, both with the Lord today, Heavenly Father. Receive our humble thanks for all mercies granted to them during their life, their earthly life with us, and especially for calling them by the gospel and sustaining them in the true faith until their departure. Comfort those who mourn their death with the hope of a glorious resurrection in a happy reunion in heaven. Helps us to remember that we are mortal, that we may ever prepare ourselves to fall asleep in faith and finally receive the glory promised to all who trust in your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who reigns with you always in heaven. Heavenly Father, let the light of Jesus now shine through us that the others may see and give glory to you through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us, you, you may remain seated for this prayer. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord and Savior Jesus taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen.
Pastor Copper will now call forward all the 2024 officers of the church and committee members to officially be installed. To close out today's, following the installation, and to close out today's service, Pastor Copper will offer the benediction, and then the congregation will sing, Let Us All with Gladsome Voice, which is on page 390 of our hymnal. 
You've been listening to the Divine Sunday Morning Worship Service from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in California, Missouri. It has been our pleasure to have you worship with the members of St. Paul's through the facilities of KRLL Radio. May God's holy angels watch over you and your loved ones, and we hope you will join us again next Sunday. Your live stream director has been Jason Youngmeyer. Your announcer has been Drew Damp. Of the installation. This is what the Apostle Peter writes in his first epistle. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified to Jesus Christ. To him belongs glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, officers, you have been elected to serve uh, in various positions in our congregation. Uh, you have been chosen to fulfill or to fill a specific positions and offices of responsibility at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. You are to work with the pastor that uh, our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in God's sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at the proper times, that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions, and that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to his institution, that provision is made for the Christian instruction of young and old, that the erring are admonished, and the discipline is maintained. For that reason, in the presence of God in this congregation, St. Paul's Lutheran Church, I therefore ask you, do you accept the offices entrusted to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord, and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. Thank you. Beloved in the Lord, you have heard the promises. Now I am talking to you, congregation. You have heard the promises of our new offices spoken by these men and women whom you have selected to serve as officers of St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Now, congregation, I want to ask you this question. Do you promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of the abilities that God, and let me add that baptism people do, so they, they may be glorified or glorified May God be glorified and his work be done in our midst. If so, then answer, we do. We do. Thank you. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, as you come up to this day and accept the new positions, I, de I install you as new officers of St. Paul's Lutheran Church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and most merciful God enlighten and strengthen you and your offices that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. Thank you so much for helping this year. May God bless you and strengthen you so you can always serve St. Paul's and the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. In congregation for the final part of the service, the benediction and the closing hymn, as we always do, I'll ask you to stand. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.